Morning, everyone. Um, and thank you, Kenneth. This is, this is the companion piece, I think. This is not a competition between RPA and, and, and CIFA. Uh, and I'm very grateful that, 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 that Kenneth's given us that, that view of how RPA does things, because we are different. And that's fine. That's all right. Um, but we do have some choices to make in CIFA about which directions we go in future over some of these areas. So it's really useful to see how other people do stuff. I'm going to say a little bit about how CIFA does stuff at present. Um, and I think there, there's some, a lot of similarities and some interesting contrasts with what we've heard. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a reprise of some of the stuff that I said yesterday in the opening address. So have a snooze if you've heard this before, but uh, there won't be too much overlap. But this slide is an overlap, and, uh, and, and I make no real apology for showing this one again. Uh, it's just the definition of professionalism, uh, an a profession being an occupation in which skilled practitioners undertake their duties in the public interest according to a code of ethics and are subject to oversight of their practitioners. And we, we need to keep that in mind all the time. And that code of ethics, slightly different approach to codes and rules from RPA, but that code is central to what a professional institute is and what a profession is. So ethics is at the core of everything that CIFA is about. Let's just have a little look at some of the resources that we have available for uh, CIFA members and indeed many others to have a look at. Uh, apologies, I will apologise for showing the same list as yesterday, but we have the e-learning module which has proved very popular. In many ways it's formatted like the ethics bowl, it draws from the ethics bowl, but we're not competitive, we're more collaborative in it. But again, we're looking at scenarios um, and practising them with the participants, working through problems together sometimes considered to be rather far-fetched and unlikely occurrences, but they are also far-fetched and unlikely occurrences that have actually happened. Um, uh, that's in the, sorry, that's the, the CPD workshops there. The e-learning module is all about everyday ethics, um, and we have the professional practice paper. The archaeologist, uh, various um, mentions in the archaeologist. We had a, an edition devoted to ethics uh, recently. There are occasional pieces and of course there are from time to time reports on professional conduct outcomes uh, and there are three in the next edition. Uh, and the shared resource that we have with our, our sister uh, and this afternoon, um, Jen is going to be talking in the IPSIG run session on the revised standards and their supporting revised guidance. And uh, we have recently revised the policy statements. But onward. Sorry, there's no pictures of bell foundries in this presentation. I do apologise for that, but thank you for that. It's a bell foundry session. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so just looking at those workshops, as I say, in, I thought it might be helpful. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to give one of our ethics CPD workshops. You have to attend for that, but just give you an idea of the sorts of stuff that we cover in those. Um, we talk about values and ethics. We talk about where ethics come from, about what matters to us, what matters to others. Values, the relationship between values, principles and, and rules we look at, some of the things that, that Kenneth has already talked about. Um, we also look at this complicated overlapping of three things that are actually quite distinct in theory but get quite messy in reality. Our obligations to comply with our professional ethics, to comply with the law and to comply with public morality. Uh, I'm not going to unpack that now, but it is something that we explore. Uh, but essentially, my contention as, uh, as, as we move forward with the review of the Code of Conduct is we want the Code of Conduct to be focused on our professional ethics and have as little involvement in our personal morality as it needs to have and not to try and duplicate what the law says, particularly 
as laws vary all around the world and the code must not. Um, we also look at the relationship between professionalism and self-regulation, the relationship between the ethical, our ethics, our ethical code, our rules and the professional conduct process. Uh, look at everyday issues, most of the ethical conundra we encounter are not about the old favourites of human remains, indigenous people's rights, appropriation. They're about managing conflicts of interest, honesty, having enough resources, being competent. We also look at how we make decisions and we explore how often people's behaviour in ethically challenging situations gets worse. They dig themselves further in, they panic. Uh, and the idea of practising hypothetical scenarios in a safe space is you can do a bit of, a bit of neuro-linguistic programming, just learn and start to recognise some situations, parallel situations, so that um, when you make that decision, which you always make on selective information because we're humans, that you make a better one than you might have done if you're really getting pretty wound up by a difficult place. Um, and we look at deontology versus consequentialism. And again, we, 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 uh, as, as, as Kenneth says, we, 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 we've merged the two. Um, we don't really look at virtue ethics. That's quite an, quite an interesting one, but I think what you're saying there, 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 there Kenneth, about um, virtue ethics, we, we do a merger of in, in, in CIFA. At the moment, it's a merger of deontology. There are rules, we do have to follow the rules, but we're also interested, and frankly, we're more interested in the consequences of your actions. I'm going to take issue with our sister organisation and say utilitarianism is a very precise subdivision of consequentialism that actually is very good for looking after the interests of the minority and not good for looking after minority views. Um, and uh, Camus said that anyone who acts with integrity has no need of rules. That's great, isn't it? If, if everyone had that integrity. We also look at what, what the hell we mean by integrity. Um, so we look at the relationship between the rules and the code enforcement, and we look, importantly, to the architecture of CIFA. An issue that we need to look at is when a professional conduct allegation comes forward, that people will often cite the rules in the code that have been broken, allegedly. They will often latch onto rule 1.1, which is a bit of a catch-all and a bit of a weak one, bringing the profession into disrepute. But they very rarely evidence the allegation that the rule has been broken by pointing out how the standard hasn't been met or how the guidance hasn't been followed. And this is one of Jen's lovely slides, and it just shows that there is the relationship. I'm not going to read the slide out because I hope you can, but you could just see that the code sits at the top of a hierarchy of more detailed information, which in involves different modalities, with the standard being very much what you must achieve, the guidance being how we recommend that you achieve that outcome, but you are at liberty to depart from that. And, and then Jen will talk about this this afternoon in the, standards, the international standards session. The guidance is split into two bits, the top layer being, we hope, universally applicable. The other thing um, in, the, in the workshops is there aren't right and wrong answers we often quite significantly disagree about what we should do with the situation. It doesn't matter. It's just to try and explore how you got to those answers and did you follow a good process. And this is the mnemonic we use, right, R-I-G-H-T. It's not ours, it comes from Roger Steer. And it stands for rule. 
equals integrity, good, harm, and truth. Um, I think integrity is how you integrate your values into your behavior. And I think that's where the value ethics is, is really centered. But yeah, we're in Nottingham. Robin Hood, very bad on R, don't know about I, did a lot of G, a lot of good for some people, but did a lot of harm for other people. T, probably pretty truthful um, about, about what he did. Form your own views as to whether Robin Hood's modus operandi was ethical or not. And just to remind you that we are now assessing the ethical competence of applicants for accredited uh, for accreditation by CIFA. Um, it's, it's a change. We're no longer just whoop, backwards. We're no longer just replying, relying on um, on waiting until things go wrong before seeing if people are competent. And that's an important part of being a professional. Sorry about the fast forward. Uh, I have got some pictures. I, this is a bad idea. I thought I'd do the rest of this in signs. Um, Kenneth has mentioned, you know, if we're going to have rules in our code of conduct, they've got to be good rules. The Ten Commandments are, are principally thou shalt not, but there are a few thou shalt in there. But we are not pure deontologists and we do not believe that our rules are handed down by God. We are not, uh, what is it, divine command theory. We're not at home to divine command theory. That's not to say, you know, you, you can have whatever beliefs you like. Um, you know, that, 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 that's entirely up to you. Sifra is not going to tell you what your religious beliefs should be, but we are going to say that our rules are our rules. We make them up. They're not given to us by God. They're given to us by our members. Uh, and rules, around my part of the world, if there's a tree, someone puts a sign on it. They can be comprehensive, but somewhat vague. Um, they can be, yeah, they can advise you, they can, they, they can guide, but we don't want to make you anxious. Um, and they can be very badly written and incredibly difficult to enforce if you really wanted to take the rules seriously. So you've got to write them in a way that they actually say what you mean. Otherwise, we're going to get into a situation where people are waiting plaintively at the top of the escalator for someone to bring them a dog that they can then take down and let the next person come up. Um, you can have warnings that are disturbing but not necessarily helpful or just cryptic and, and weird um, or possibly, well, it works on so many levels, I don't know, don't know quite what it means. But as I say, <laughs> yeah, they are our rules. They are created by us. We can change the rules. We will change the rules. They are changeable. Um, but the point is, yeah, and, and we are going to have to make some decisions as we go through this. We will, we will probably all want to end up in the same place, roughly, but there are different ways of getting there, and the decisions might be relatively arbitrary. Um, the process that we have let's be transparent about this, there's an advisory panel, many of them are in this room and uh, the, they are leading the next section of the, of the discussions. Um, the advisory council is a very important role on this, that's the board's principal source of advice on, well, everything really. And all CIFA members, it's our code. This, this, this is a we conversation, not a they or you conversation. Uh, I've done a scoping exercise and we've pulled out some issues that we think we need to look at. There is a consultation live on that. It should have been emailed to every member, should be on the website, printed out version at the front if you want to have a look. Uh, and we really want, this is part of it, by the way, we really want your input, we want your responses. That advisory panel is going to sift through all of your, all of your responses to see where the feelings are. It's not necessarily a numerical survey, but we just want to get all the good ideas and, and just try and get a, a sense of where the feelings are. Then we will do lots and lots of drafting, lots of conversation, and take it to an AGM, possibly more than once, who knows. Um, and we will 
we will do so, I think, with caution, I hope. Um, and the issues that we're going to look at and now look at over the rest of the day in not quite um, this order are those ones. Do we understand what we're getting into? Uh, how can we make sure that people know how to use the code and the other documents around it? Which bits are out of date? What's missing? And Leo is going to help us with how can we ensure that it really does work wherever a CIFA accredited professional goes. Oh yeah, and can we put it into English please? And that's me. Thank you, Alex.